Welcome to the Jaron Jarvis channel. I am Jaron Jarvis. Today, I would like to introduce to you, my brother Callum. Callum, my older brother, moved out almost five years ago now. That's not quite right. He was really taken away. I'm 13 now. Basically the same age he was then. Mum and dad never told me why they did this. Why he had to live in a special facility in Canada. After everything that had happened I think they just understood that I'd understand the reasons why. I never argued. Ms. Hammond, our English teacher at school, is always banging on about the way English people like us never want to talk about our feelings. We will hide what is going on inside our heads and refuse to discuss uncomfortable topics. Ms. Hammond says that us English are so afraid of anything improper that we will let things fester inside. It's exactly that with our family. I'd have no idea how Callum was doing if it weren't for his emails. He knew my email address by heart because he chose it for me when he set up the account. This was not so long before he was taken away. At the time it was tremendous fun to have a secret email address. Now it almost seems like he knew what was going to happen. I learned to be wary around him. You couldn't deny he always had a good sense of what he was doing. He never said much in his emails about what life was like in the facility. We mostly discussed what was going on at home. Sometimes, over the years, he seemed angry with mum and dad. At other times he was more understanding. He'd get these mood swings. I think he was changing somehow. Living with someone is different to emailing them. It was easy to forget what he'd been like in person. For example, I was thinking recently about the time we got a cat. We got it as a kitten and named it Felix. We had him a year before we he disappeared. We thought that maybe a neighbor was feeding him, but his food and water bowls kept emptying. And Callum kept on telling us he'd seen Felix. In the garden, or in the house, or on top of the shed. So it took us a little while to realize that Felix really was missing. It began to seem like Callum was taunting us when he kept on telling mum he'd just seen Felix disappear under the hedge, or on the walk home from school. I remember mum's face whenever he told her. I think we got the cat mostly for mum. Callum would have been about ten at the time. We got another cat a year ago, just after we made the big move. A ginger cat that mum called Ginger. Callum was far away in Canada so Ginger could rest easy. It helped distract us from all the alarm systems they were installing in our new house. I told Callum about the move. It didn't seem to upset him at all. I was upset about it for him. I didn't have many friends at school, so a fresh start somewhere new seemed like a good idea, but it angered me the way we were abandoning the Callum part of our lives. Mum and Dad may have been happy to leave it all behind, but I wasn't. Not that anybody said anything out loud about it. What with us being English and all. We all just got stressed about putting everything into boxes. We moved on to a bigger, fancier house, in a fancy neighborhood, down south, closer to London. We now had a better life without him. When I first saw the house, from inside the property, you can't see it from the road, I couldn't help but stare at all the windows. I'm not weird but there was a lot of windows. There was this back extension which was almost entirely double glazing. It made me think about the afternoon that Callum spent putting holes through our back windows with my football. One after the other. When they got back he told mum and dad he was practicing practicing for what? Dad had shouted, driving us around the bend? He basically was. Sometimes I secretly listen to mum and dad talking when they think I've gone to bed. I started doing it after Callum left. It was actually his idea. I remember once mum telling dad that she was convinced that Callum had some kind of grudge against her. Something she had done very early on that they didn't realize had hurt or upset him. Something that he should never have remembered. Mum said she was convinced that if that had never happened, everything would have been fine. Dad didn't like this at all. Told her it was something about Callum. Something they weren't responsible for. Mum started crying at that point and I decided to stop listening. I didn't tell Callum about what I'd overheard, even although I suspected it was exactly the stuff he wanted reported. Probably why he set up the email in the first place. When I think about it, the more I thought Callum would want something I heard reported back to him, 
the less willing I was to email it. Last week things started to happen. Over the last five years, except for the big move, I'd grown used to our life being very peaceful. Straightforward. But some things changed. There was a long phone call a couple of nights ago, and then several others. Mum and Dad had frantic conversations out of earshot. They'd come and pick me up from school in the Land Rover. Both of them together, their conversation stopping as soon as they saw me coming out the gates. I managed to catch part of one conversation late in the evening though. It made sense of a lot of things, although they didn't explicitly say anything. From what they seemed to say, I worked out that there had been a breakout at the facility. But not recently, around a year ago. Around the time that we moved. I think we moved in case Callum tried to come back. To find us. I think the new alarm systems are for Callum. But now, a year after the breakout, my parents have been told that Callum is dead. Dead for months. Maybe even the whole year. The people at the facility are almost certain of it. I thought mum and dad would cry, but they didn't. They seemed upset. But also shocked. But also relieved. They were planning how to tell me. I decided I should cry when they told me. But I couldn't. I acted confused instead. Like I couldn't understand it. I asked how he died and they told me there was an accident. I really am confused though. I can't believe Callum is really dead. Not when he is still emailing me back. In fact, in the past year, we've been talking more than ever. Edit, part 2 to come.